Welcome back to the channel guys, Tyraku here, and today is gonna be a little bit different, but I got a feeling if you like the content, like the games that I typically play, you're really gonna like this game. This game is called Dragon Air Silent Gods. So basically, this is a high fantasy open world RPG game that is gonna be releasing in the later half of 2023, and it's something you're definitely gonna wanna keep your eye out on, and I honestly plan on playing quite a bit of this on the release. Luckily, I got access to the game right now, so I'm gonna play around with it a little bit before the release, but things could change, of course. So this video is a sponsored video by Dragon Air Silent Gods. If you guys wanna try it out, click the link down below, sign up for the pre-registration, and if we reach the goal, we will all get a free Eric Legendary Champion, which is gonna be super awesome. Let's go ahead and get to talk about some of this stuff, okay? So Dragon Air has a partnership with D&D. So you're gonna see iconic characters and gameplay from D&D inside of Dragon Air Silent Gods, such as Driss Dorden, hopefully I'm saying that name right, not super familiar with how to pronounce those names, but you're gonna see a lot of the similar vibe from D&D over into Dragon Air Silent Gods. Probably the most notable thing is gonna be the dice roll mechanic. The dice rolls basically inside this game are gonna be used for several different things throughout the game, such as stealing, trading, fighting, persuading, and even convincing legendary NPCs to join your team, which is absolutely incredible. So moving past the dice rolling part of the game, there's gonna be quite a bit of puzzle solving mechanics as well. Not only that, on the map, you're gonna have those puzzles to solve, but you're also gonna have different areas to do some treasure hunting. So when you're exploring through the open world, you're gonna to have to be on the lookout for different treasures in different areas to go ahead and collect, get something really good, or it may not even matter that much, but you're always gonna be on the lookout for either treasure to hunt, or if you're feeling a little bit, I guess, uh, adventurous, you can start stealing from people. So stealing is also inside the game as well. Once again, the dice rollings will come into play when you're trying to steal, when you're trying to persuade, when you're trying to do really a lot of different things. It's very similar to the whole D&D &D type mechanics. So guys, with that said, I wanna go ahead and jump into the game so you guys kinda got a little bit of overview here. Let's go ahead and jump into some actual gameplay, see how it plays. Here we are now inside of Dragon Air and there's a few things I wanna talk about. So the very first thing is the open world sandbox type exploration. This is gonna be very different than really any other mobile game that I've played. This is a mobile game that also is playable on PC, so you can play it really wherever, whenever you want. But the thing is, is that most games like this that are kind of similar have linear progression, okay? So you have campaign stage one, stage two, stage three, and then campaign chapter two, whatever it may be. And this game, it's very different. You can see right here, we have a much more open world type exploration, which is very cool. Okay, so right now we're in kind of a wooded area, but let's say we're feeling a little bit chiller okay we want to go up here and then we're just going to fast travel to the snowy land okay the snow land whatever this is called we have some snow and some mountains so a different a change of pace and completely different environment in general and different people to talk to one of the biggest things that decide for me if i'm going to play or not are the heroes you can collect okay the heroes and the graphics i'm a very big fan of this dark medieval type D, &D type graphics and they definitely do so well on it. Just check out some of these heroes, okay? Lord of the Gale. We have Spectral Troll. We have some awesome looking heroes. This orc dude here, awesome. Fire Dragon. Honestly, I could look through all these heroes. They all look so, so good. Some Undeads, the Headless Dude. I love that green. This guy looks really cool. I'm usually not a huge fan of wizards, but this guy looks awesome. Lightless Prophet, very cool looking. We have a... Uh, a rat prophet here, prophet rat woman, pretty neat. We gotta do some summons, okay? Gotta do some summons. The thing I think is really cool, okay? Getting into the summons, now this could change on actual release, but the probability, check this out, okay? Legendary hero, a legendary hero is guaranteed in the 55th attempt upon successive failures. That's very awesome. You're guaranteed a legendary. The original drop rate's 2%, this could change, but you're guaranteed a legendary. So let's go ahead and jump in here and do some summons. Here we go, the first one. A group of five back to the dice stuff we have a dice rolling very cool animation i love it when games put effort into their summon animations i mean let's be honest if we're playing these games we enjoy summonings so when games actually put that extra effort into the summon animations it just feels so much better even if you get all rares it still feels a lot better than just nothing for the animations right so here we go let's do another summon hopefully we get a legendary here I know a lot of games have some really cool legendary summon animations, so let's see if we get anything good here. All right, zooming out, and there we go. We got some gold. We got some gold action. 
I think our legendary is coming up. I would hope so. <laughs> we got some gold there. Okay. So we got this rare. We got the rare. That rare actually looked really cool. I love it when games put actual effort towards a rare champion. I mean, this guy could easily be legendary artwork in any other game. Looks so cool. There we go. Luminary Cleric. That's awesome. That is a really cool looking champion. I already have her on this account. There we go. We got a legendary champion. So now let's go ahead and go back into it. And hey, let's show you guys some combat. All right. That's what you guys want to see. I know it is. So we're going to go to our map. We're going to go over here to the right and we're going to teleport to the fire cave. So this is going to be used to improve your champions used specifically for your fire fire heroes. Okay. And this one is going to be used to empower or improve better yet your poison heroes. So we're going to go fast travel there and then we're going to set up our heroes to fight the enemy as you would expect, right? We're not planning to just let the enemy beat us. So let's go ahead and enter the fire cave, enter that, see how we can fare against these probably level one heroes. Maybe I'll bring a few of my level one heroes. I'm a little bit overpowered compared to them, but I'll bring some lower level heroes to give them a chance, you know? So here we go, level 25's back there. Let's go ahead and put some of my heroes in. So here we go, we're gonna put this guy, actually, let's use our brand new hero. So when you are placing these heroes, okay? So you're gonna have the tile type battlefield. And when you're placing them, you can notice that it shows the, I guess, aggro basically, all right? So this hero's placed here. You can see all those red lines. Those are all the enemies that are gonna be targeting my cleric, all right? So if I put this next hero in the back, you're gonna notice everybody's attacking the cleric, so he's gonna have nobody attacking him. So obviously, you're gonna want your more tanky heroes up front and your not so tanky heroes in the back. This lizard looking champion looks a lot more tanky, just assuming, judging maybe, than this cleric in the back. So we're gonna go ahead and stack a few more level ones in here, just a few more. I think our lizard dude in the front should be able to handle them. We're gonna drop these guys back into the second line and then we're gonna throw in another point. Actually, let's do this dwarf. This dwarf looks sick, so we're gonna use him. Let's go ahead and click the battle and see how this turns out. I got a feeling that we're gonna come out victorious even with all of my level one heroes. Level 25s don't even matter. I mean, we got a level 50, kind of just holding all the weight. Okay, there we go. We got some damage meter on the side, which I think is very, very interesting. You can see, which I love this, okay? I love being able to see throughout the course of the fight, what hero does well. Because sometimes heroes may not do that much damage, but they did great consistent damage throughout, or maybe they just scale very quickly. So like they'll do damage slowly, but then all of a sudden they start ramping up very quickly. We're gonna turn it to auto there, go ahead and activate the ultimate skills automatically. We get to the last stage here and see how this plays out. But yeah, I love seeing this damage meter on the side because you can really see, hey, this hero may not be geared that well, but they're doing really good damage. Maybe I need to take the gear from Kairos and put it on Rosella. I mean, Rosella is level one, Kairos is level 50, and Rosella is doing 21% of our damage, which I'd say is pretty impressive. So here we are, we're on the Fire Lady right now, the crazy Flame Witch, Felicity, actually. I don't think she ch stands a chance. Actually, I'll take that back. Kairos, you may have to solo this, buddy. It's getting pretty close. We got two level ones still alive. Our brand new cleric is putting some good heals out. There we go, sweet. All right, so there we go. This is just one area, one type of battle in the game. That's the fire cave. I wanna show you all a different area, all right? This is gonna be the Lost Fortress. This is where you're gonna farm your experience, basically. Uh, this is used to increase selected heroes' experience by 1,000 and then 4,000. In these higher stages, you're gonna get, obviously, higher quantity of those potions. So this is kind of like your tower defense setup, all right? So you can see on the top right, the enemies are gonna come in this way. They're gonna go down. This one's not a very complicated map. But I imagine the later stages you get, the more and more difficult it's gonna become. Let's go ahead and place some heroes up here, place some heroes back here, and then we're gonna place some level twos around here as well. So you can see their, I guess, area of targeting. You can see the square around them, that yellow square. That's where these champions, these heroes can actually deal damage from. So you're gonna to wanna to put champions in certain positions based on the strategy that you wanna deploy, hit battle, and then the enemies are gonna drop in and you're gonna hope to be able to prevent the enemies from getting to the end and then messing you up. We're gonna turn to auto, let all the champions use their stuff on full auto, and then hopefully this goes pretty smooth. We got a lot of deer. We're just sniping the deer down from the back. I love it. That's actually a pretty sick looking ultimate there. And you see some more dice rolls happening, dice rolls all throughout the game. The D&D &D vibes, you get dice rolls all the time. Which is pretty cool, I think. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and let this battle play out, guys.
All right, so I may be a little bit overpowered for that area of the game, but you can see the potential strategy that will be involved in actually setting that up correctly to make sure that the enemies attacking don't get all the way around back to your heroes. Now, when it comes to improving your heroes, this is what I love, all right? So we have variable gear farming. So here we go. This helmet is not the same as this helmet. This helmet has attack speed, attack, resistance, and attack percentage. This helmet has crit rate, resistance, and HP percentage. So you're not just farming gear, throwing the random gear on your heroes, and then you're good to go with a cookie cutter build for every hero. Yeah, of course, some things are gonna be better for other heroes, but now you can actually start farming consistently for the best possible gear for whatever you want, and you can make your builds pretty unique to how you wanna play whatever hero it is. Now, of course, like I said, there's gonna be optimal ways to play them, but you're gonna have quite a bit of freedom. Now, when it comes to enhancing the gear, this is a so nice to just be able to scroll up on the levels. Let's go ahead and upgrade this to, let's see, level 20. We're gonna need 53,000 gold. Hey, we know what we're gonna need. Go ahead and take a level 20. We get plus three to our skill haste. I guess three rolls to the skill haste and one roll to the attack percentage, but there's no fails, nothing like that. We know exactly what we're gonna pay. We don't have to wait for it to upgrade like a lot of games do. We just know what we're gonna pay. We pay it, we get to level 20, and it's done. Super simple. And now we just equip that, and then we can equip anything else, okay? Weapon. When it comes to these kind of games, you could do all the farming in the world, but if there's no PvP, then what are you doing it for, right? But here we go, we have the Grand Gladiator Arena. Now keep in mind, this is the beta server, so there's not gonna be many players here. Let's go ahead and check it out, all right? The Grand Gladiator Arena. This is where you're gonna show everybody all the stuff you've been farming okay all that gear all the upgraded gear here we go we have people on the left side of the target we have uh brit ranala i don't know i don't know how to say her name but guess what i don't know if it really matters we're gonna throw some of our uh awesome maybe slightly overpowered heroes into here actually you know what just do one level 100 and then the rest level ones okay we're gonna use some of our legendaries actually matter of fact you know what we want to keep it a little fair all right we're gonna drop the level 100 we're just gonna throw level ones, all right? Awesome, that's a really cool looking model there. Uh, this Minotaur looking dude looks sick. All right, that's a pretty consistent theme though. I got a feeling this water uh, creature probably doesn't wanna be in the front line. So let's put our thicker looking dudes in the front. There we go. And let's see how this actually plays out. We're all level ones and they're level six, nines, 13s. Got a feeling we got the advantage though. Maybe not though. We got some legendary and epics. So does the levels balance each other out? Let's see. I don't know. If, if they don't, we're going to come back again with a vengeance. I'm going to show them what the level 100 champions can do. All right. Let's see. That's pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Turn on 2x speed. The animations of these heroes' ultimate skills look pretty awesome. I love that it doesn't take up too much time, but it's just enough time to be flashy and have a pretty good animation. But not so long you're like, okay, I'm getting tired, kind of tired of watching this. I think that's pretty, pretty good balance. There we go. I'd say we won. They have nothing. We have everything. I'd say we're in a pretty good spot. So now we did some, uh, we did some battling. We did some uh, plenty of battling, I'd say. Let's go ahead and get back to the map. And I want to do a little bit more exploration with you all. So I was exploring the map just a little bit. I wanted to take you all along with me. And then I came along somebody named Tyra. And I figured that Tyra is pretty close to my name, unfortunately. So we're going to stop and talk to see what Tyra has to say. Uh, what is Tyra? What do you have to say? Elven Treasury, I know you. You're the warrior who purified the altars, right? Sounds like me. Uh, who are you? A hypogen elf? Why are you on the ground? All right, we're going to skip past some of this text. For now, I can help you retrieve it. Thank you so much. Let's see, let's see. What do we gotta do? What kind of mission are we being set off to do? Okay, we just took a quest. Elven treasury. We gotta go in here, bring the loot from the elven. Okay, let's see what she has to say. Okay, bring the loot from the elven treasury to Tyra. Okay, so she can't handle these people inside this place. I think I got them. I think I got them under control. No issue whatsoever. We're just gonna drop a few of our level hundreds in here. Go ahead and do a fast clear and bring back Tyra. Cause you know, we got a pretty similar name. So we're gonna bring back Tyra, the loot that she wants from this cave, from this forest, and hopefully get something good in return. We got two level hundreds in here. They're actually level 35, a little bit higher than I expected, but a really cool like druid type layout here. I like that quite a bit. Druid elf type. All right, here we go, victory. Speed farming, baby. All right, let's go ahead and back out of this place, back to the world, got our loot. 
We're going right out of there. Bring the loot to Tyra. All right, Tyra. Here's the loot. Confirm. There you go. Yes, this is the scroll. I would sure hope so. All right, time to fulfill the promise. Now we may meet again. There we go. We got 100 Dragon Marrow Stone. A mysterious gem with a dragon power dwelling within can be used to exchange for rare items. Hey, I'm a fan of rare items, so I'll be... I'll be doing some more quests. Don't forget to pre-register using my link down below. Thank you again to Dragon Air Silent Gods for sponsoring today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely looking forward to it coming out in the later half of 2023. And I'll catch you all in the next video.